GameMaker operates on an event system. Simply put, it means that when an event happens, something, some input from the keyboard, or a collision, or something in your game, there is a reaction, which on the right side you'll see the actions panel. A quick example of this is, if you had an event press the space bar, you could have the action make the player jump. That's a very truncated way of looking at it because we will have to do things a little more in depth. Now that you understand that, let's add an event to your object. There are two ways to manipulate events in this panel. At the bottom we have three buttons, add event, delete, and change. But you can also right click in an empty space in the events panel. This will give you similar options. The first thing we need to do is add an event. When you click add event, you'll be presented with the choose the event to add window. The first button is create. What this means is when the object is created. This is the first thing that will happen when a room starts. All of your objects will be added to the room. And when they are, this event will take place. As an example, let's just say you have your main player. And when he's created, his health starts at 10 and his jump speed is at 20. The create event is a great way to initialize all of the information about this particular object. The next event is destroy. This is like the opposite of create. It means when this object is destroyed, removed from the room. This might trigger some sort of action, such as if an enemy is destroyed, the action is get 10 points. The next is alarm. If you click on it, you'll get a drop down of 12 alarms listed 0 through 11. This event means when this alarm sounds, or when it goes off. Let's say that one of your alarms is set to 10 seconds once the room starts. After 10 seconds, that alarm will sound, and the action might be something like spawn a bunch of enemies. Since video games are completely based on timing, it's important to understand how alarms work. Now you only get 12 per object, so later we'll talk about timelines. This is a more advanced version of alarms. It's in your resource tree, but we will get into it later. The next event is very important to understand. This is the step event. For this, you kind of have to understand how time works. In the real world, we measure time in, let's say, seconds. Now we have smaller measurements, but let's just say seconds. Animation on your screen is a manipulation of quickly interchanging frames. This gives your eyes the illusion of motion. Most video games are set to 30 or 60 frames a second, but it can be totally variable and it depends on your graphics setting, your graphics card, your computer, your monitor's refresh rate, or a lot of different things that decide frames per second. Steps are a little different. When we get into rooms, there'll be an option to set how many steps are in the room. The rooms in GameMaker operate on what's called speed, or room speed, and this is set in steps. The default is 30 steps but you can change this to a different number, and we'll get into it later. But right now, let's talk about the default of 30 steps. The room speed in steps happens per second. So the default of 30 means that there are 30 steps in one second. Every time a step happens, that means the computer has cycled through all of your code once. So you're telling GameMaker to cycle through your code 30 times before one real world second has elapsed. If this seems kind of confusing right now, it probably is because we haven't talked about rooms yet. But what you have to understand is steps happen all the time. They're happening at default 30 times a second. So whereas the create event only happens when your object is created, and the destroy event only happens when your object is destroyed, step events happen every single step of the game. Every frame, every second. So, in conclusion, Step events are where you put code that is going to happen all the time. As an example, your player movement would go into a step event because you want to have your user control the player at all times. Every single step your user is pressing an arrow key, you want the player to move. So as long as this object exists, step code will happen. Now you'll notice though when you click on it you get a drop down of step, begin step, and end step. This is simply to create an ordering system for your steps. Because steps happen all the time, you might find it a little more useful to put things in a very specific order. So when GameMaker gets to the portion of reading your step code, it'll read the begin step, then your step, 
then your end step. And of course, this will happen every single step and every single second of your game. Confusing to say the least, but once we get into code, you'll really see how the step event is used in every single video game. Below step, you'll find the collision event. This is when two objects collide. If you click it, you should get a drop down menu of other objects you've already created. So of course this event is saying, when these two objects overlap each other, do an action. Let's say when your player overlaps an enemy. You can either say the enemy dies, or your player loses health, or I don't know, something along those lines. Either way, it's pretty simple. It just means when they overlap. GameMaker uses masks to detect whether or not two objects overlap. So it's important to understand masks, and we'll go over all of this in the collisions lesson. Below that, you'll find keyboard. This gives you a very large drop-down menu. It's important to understand that there are actually three keyboard events. It's a little strange because they're not next to each other on this menu. There's keyboard, key press, and key release. Every step of the game, GameMaker checks whether your keyboard key is being held, whether it was just pressed, or whether it was just released. So what that means is keyboard events check whether or not the key is being held down and then continually will do that code. As an example, if your user is pressing the right arrow key and holding it down, you probably want your player to run toward the right side of the screen. This would be put in the keyboard event because it's happening all the time because the key is being held down. However, something like jump would be put in key press. You only want GameMaker to check whether or not the user pressed the key once. And that's it. Then there's also key release, similar to key press. However, the code will execute when the user releases a key. So whichever of the three you're going to use, you'll be presented with a drop-down menu of all the keys on your keyboard. The first section is your arrow keys, left, right, up, and down. The next section would be all of your modifier keys, as well as space and enter. So that's control, alt, shift, space, and enter. The next section has a bunch of pull-out submenus. The keypad deals with your numpad, and remember that most laptops don't have numpads, so you might want to refrain from putting any code on top of the keypad. The next pullout is digits. This is just your digits row above all the letters on your keyboard, 0 through 9. After that, you have your letters. Those are obviously just the letters on your keyboard. Below that, we have function keys, all the F keys at the top, and below that, we have others. This contains backspace, escape, home, and page up, page down, delete, and insert. Then below that, we have a very special section. We have no key and any key. This just checks whether or not the keyboard is not being touched, nothing is being pressed or held down, and any key is, well, any key on the keyboard. You ever seen a game at the beginning when it says press any key to start? Sure, that's where you'd put any key. And sometimes you want to make sure that the user is not touching his keyboard, so you would select no key. At the top of the second column, we have the mouse event. Now this is only one drop down, but it contains a very similar setup to keyboard, key press, and key release. The first section says left button, right button, middle button. This is similar to the keyboard event. GameMaker is checking whether or not these mouse buttons are being held down. It's being checked constantly. This may be important if you have a game where the main character moves towards the mouse click, so that if you hold down the mouse button, the player will move towards the mouse, and it's being checked whether or not the mouse button is being held down. This section is no button. It's like no key. GameMaker just wants to know whether or not the buttons are being used on the mouse or not. Below that is the section for pressed. This checks if one of the three buttons was pressed since the last step. It's similar to how I described key press when your character jumps. We only want to check the press once. Below that we have released. It's the same thing as press, just releasing the mouse button. Now we have something different from the keyboard. This is mouse enter and mouse leave. This checks whether or not the mouse cursor has recently entered or left the object in question. This could be important for changing the cursor. Let's say you're using the default arrow icon for your mouse, but then when you enter this object or you are now overlapping it, you change it to the hand. And then when your mouse leaves this object, you go back to the arrow. Below that, we have mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down. This just checks whether or not you're using the mouse wheel scrolling up or scrolling down. The last section is a submenu pullout for global mouse. Here you'll find mouse button presses for being held, being pressed once, and being released once. 
this object is checking whether or not the mouse buttons are being clicked anywhere in your room and not on top of this object. All the other mouse button checks, like left button, left pressed, and left release, are checking whether or not you are holding, clicking, or releasing on top of the object. However, global mouse just checks whether the mouse is using these buttons anywhere in the room. If you remember when we talked about controller objects, a controller object might benefit from global mouse. Let's say you wanted your main character to move towards the mouse cursor whenever you click down the left mouse button. This would be done in global mouse. Because you're not clicking on your player to move, you're clicking anywhere on the screen. It's not too complicated, you just have to understand that global means anywhere, and not global means specifically on the object you're using. Below mouse, you'll find an event called other. These are some predefined events that YoYo Games has set up for the users. It's actually really helpful. The first section has two selections, outside room and intersect boundary. Outside room checks that whenever this object is outside the boundaries of your room, like let's say your room is only 400 by 400 pixels, and this object goes outside those 400 by 400 pixels, then you can make something happen. Let's say the object is destroyed, because whenever it leaves the screen, you don't want it in the game anymore. Intersect boundary is sort of similar to outside room, but rather than waiting for your object to leave the boundaries of the room, this takes place right when your object intersects the exact boundary of the room. This might be necessary if you were bouncing off the edge of the room. The next section is for views. We'll touch on this later when we talk about rooms, because rooms also have views. It's kind of like a camera for your room. The next section is game start and game end. Similar to how we have create and destroy for an object, this is when the game starts and ends. What this means is any action you put inside this event means that when the game starts, these actions take place, like all your options load up. Or when the game ends, all your options get saved. Next we have room start and room end. It's exactly like game start and game end, but it happens every time we go into a new room. Or we leave a room. The next two options actually deal with some built-in variables for GameMaker. YoYo Games has offered us things like lives and health, and these events check whether or not you're out of lives or you're out of health. So if you're out of lives, we could say, well, the game ends. Or if you're out of health, we can say, you lose a life. You don't have to use the built-in variables, but they are helpful if you're just quickly making a game or you're new to GameMaker. The next selection is animation end. This event will take place when the animation for your sprite has ended. So let's say that your animation is nine frames long. After the nine frames have played out, your action will take place. For example, let's say you have an animation for your player's death. Once the death animation ends, the room restarts. The next section is end of path. We haven't talked about path yet, and we'll get into it when we talk about code. And the last one is user defined. This is actually where you get to make up your own event. It's a little more advanced than what we're talking about right now, so we will get into it when we talk about code. The next event is draw. You'll get a drop down for draw, draw GUI, which stands for graphic user interface, and the last option is resize. The draw event, much like the step event, happens all the time in your game. And this is the only place where you can draw things to the screen. Now it's not like drawing like you would with pen and paper. This is the computer generating an image for your game. This could be a sprite that you've already created, or you can generate some sort of primitive object like a square or a circle or lines. We'll get into that when we talk about code. This is also where you would generate your text. When you want to draw your high score to your screen to let your player know what his high score is, you would use the draw event. Draw and draw GUI have some subtle differences, but they're very important to understand, and we'll get into it when we talk about code. But for now, all you really have to understand is when you need to draw something to your game screen or generate some sort of image that is not already an object, you can do it through draw. Below that is keyboard press and release, which we already talked about when we mentioned keyboard. So we'll move on to the last option, which is asynchronous. Asynchronous has the option for networking. This is a very advanced event, and it has to do with accessing networks. Things like Steam or Cloud, in-app purchases, uh, HTTP. It all depends on which modules you've paid for and installed through GameMaker. This event is not triggered through GameMaker. It's actually triggered over the net. This is a very advanced option, and we'll get into it later, because it's not really necessary for most of the games you'll be making, especially your first few games. 
Those are all the events that exist inside your object properties window. If you no longer want any of your events, you can click and highlight one of them and then click delete or change. This is if you want to change the event, like let's say you accidentally used mouse release instead of mouse pressed. Well, here you can just click change and select mouse pressed instead. All your actions will stay there, which is important, but it'll now be triggered by a different event. You want to be careful when clicking delete because this will remove all of your actions as well. So let's say under your create event, you put in all the code you needed for when your object is created, but then you click on delete and you delete your create event. All of those actions will go away. All that code you wrote is gone. Be careful when deleting anything. The final section, the largest section on the right side of the object properties window is actions. Here you should have a whole bunch of vertical tabs, such as move, main one, main two, control, score, extra, and draw. Now, for the purposes of my lessons, we're not using drag and drop coding. GameMaker is really good for drag and drop coding. What this means is you can grab any of these pre-made actions and then just drag and drop them into actions and set up what you want to do. These lessons are more for intermediate users, and therefore we're only going to be talking about the built-in GameMaker language called GML. To generate code, all you have to worry about is the tab called Control. Here you'll see questions, other, code, and variables. We're going to deal with the section called Code. There are three icons. There's Execute Code, Execute Script, and Comment. For the most part, we might only need that first little page icon called Execute Code. All you need to do is click and hold down on the icon and drag it into a blank section in the Actions panel. This will open up your code editor inside GameMaker. But to understand this window, you're going to have to watch the coding lesson.